What? Good YouTube, and welcome to Late Night Messy John Moore talking about the Tyler the Great Warrior drama, because there are a ton of bad takes really taking off in the Yu-Gi-Oh! communities on the internet right now. I'm seeing them multiple places, and I want to say my thoughts on them having been around the Yu-Gi-Oh! community for 20 years. So if you've been living under a rock, today, Simo documented and put up a video along with Tyler himself of Tyler the Great Warrior getting graded and it will be going up for auction and sale in the future. Other channels like Ruxin have been covering this as well, saying their thoughts. And on Twitter, over on Facebook, in Discords, Yu-Gi-Oh! communities, I'm seeing a couple people saying, why would you take it out of that case and put it in a slab? How could you? And how could they give it a 7? Why would they give such a legendary card such a low grade? First off, if you're a grading company, what is your job? Yeah, it's to grade and accurately do so. So many different companies got caught with their hands in the cookie jar, in the grading industry, or auction houses being involved where they shouldn't be. And that's another thing we'll bring up. People are criticizing that it will be publicly on eBay and that it should be in an auction house or somewhere honorable. Dude, auction houses bottleneck the potential buyers, thus probably actually it would make it less than what he would get publicly on eBay. And that's a whole different can of worms. But let me go ahead and start with the grading company part. First off, the screw down case is actually what was damaging Tyler the Great Warrior. And other people are saying, well, the condition shouldn't matter on a one for one. Absolutely, it does. Preservation of something like that that is a collectible condition does matter and will actually affect the buyers. Because who are the buyers? Really rich people who are just going with feelings alongside what they can afford. Those are the two things. So having as many interested whales as possible will bid the action up. And if somebody's going, well, I only collect near mint things. And even though it's a one out of one, it doesn't really fit my collection unless it's in at this price. And they pull the price down a little because it's not near mint. It absolutely can affect it. It will only not affect it if the top two interested whales going head to head, bidding it up at the end, really don't care about the condition at all so with one for one items yeah it actually can end up hurting it a little bit probably not too much i estimate this will go for hundreds of thousands of dollars that could be conservative it could even be into the million dollar plus range but i personally think hundreds of thousands of dollars which is still life changing money at the end of the day but it getting a grade yeah the grading company is doing its job doing so accurately ruxin was looking at the video showing how they were scuffing on the back they even point out it has a crease which is not great for the card but it's centering was perfect which was what they were really scared about i'm not the best judge on centering myself it's something with grading i absolutely hate so when it comes to slab yes it takes away the playability of a card but a one out of one card is unlikely to be played unless the owner's an absolute mad lad especially in the case of tyler I do think also, again, that sour taste of grading companies has this large conversation because a ton of conversations seem to be circling that, but not pinpointing it exactly in what's wrong. Now, again, people are saying you could authenticate it with the drawings by Kazuka Takahashi. Fakes are only as bad as they will be now and are only going to get better. There are fakes that pass through grading, including, I believe, a recent 10,000 dragon. There was the Mattel Cyber Dragon incident, which went through PSA and got graded, and people mistook that as authentication. And now we've seen that there were supposed shill biddings around that that got caught, and then it went off for auction and didn't get out there and kept going up, down, crazy prices. And the consistent the consensus by the community at large at this point is that that's likely very fake and when we're looking through to Tyler the Great Warrior having Tyler document it himself go through this process having it preserved in something that's also serialized that really helps the case for this card and I do think it's very likely that whoever buys it, unless they go into a financial emergency, it'll be finding its forever home for the foreseeable future, for decades perhaps, maybe to the grave. It absolutely just depends who ends up winning the auction. Now, to the other point, should Tyler be selling this? It was a gift to him. 
the dude beat cancer and lived on and has a second life at this point. And his reasons for it's so wholesome in the video. He wants to build the business, help out his community, travel. He wants to experience that life he has. It is absolutely okay for him to be doing this. And I get very heated, which is why I don't do a lot of drama videos. I really pour myself into these. But uh, trying to tone it down even, like, he absolutely has every right to do with his property as he wants. And I think it's awesome that we even got to see insight into the drawings by Kazuka Takahashi himself that like we didn't see get confirmation that it is a one out of one because there were a lot of rumors oh there's four oh ex Konami employee kept one oh there were extras on the printing press he got to see the printing process himself go through these and I I just don't understand certain reactions to it that like oh well yeah it's not supposed to be for sale this this belongs in a museum that sort of stuff and and I do agree that if there was ever the demand for a Yu-Gi-Oh! museum that would hopefully end up for there, but the, like, the museum industry is a lot of people trying to hype up individual not known privately or equity owned items and like making money off of it and museums exist thanks to donors not because they're profitable. It's a whole thing you can look into yourself. Anyways, back on track. I think the conversation with Tyler in specific does show a larger misunderstanding of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community about certain things. I do think that people should be wary and certainly distrust the culture around slabs that exist. Instagram to me is vendor hell. If I was still a vendor, I would be in the pits of it. Thank gosh that I don't have to be. I think it's a lot of culture selling culture and people hype beasting things up and going crazy and we're seeing the absolute crash of the slab market itself right now. I've always said on the channel, I would only go PSA 10 or BGS 9.5 or better gold slash black label. And now you do have other reputable grading companies getting in on it. But when it comes to slabs, you do take away that playability of the card. And I'm not a huge fan of slabs, but I do think for preservation, if you're now turning it into a collectible, that's probably a great idea, especially for a one out of one card that will now be, you know, authenticated along with it. You have Tyler, you have a documentary, you have a serial number. I think all of that is really good. Now, absolutely, it could be cracked and graded somewhere else. These kinds of variables can change depending on who owns it in the future. But again, I don't blame Tyler at all for the steps that he took, considering that online... He basically became a legendary story in his own right where people didn't know what was fact and fiction. Great job by Simo and Gage for documenting this. Thank you for the coverage. I think that for a legendary piece of Yu-Gi-Oh! history as somebody who does try to hunt down things similar, not in that realm, I will not have a bid on this. I think it will be way out of my price range when all is said and done, but if it's cheap enough, I just don't think it will it's gonna cross into six digits i have to imagine that it will be out of my price range but when it comes to hunting down rare pieces of Yu-Gi-Oh history unique collectibles and that sort of thing this i think going through the process was absolutely nice and again i think there's that kind of hitting around the issue that people want to speak on and giving attributes to the situation that aren't specifically there thanks for watching today's video drama will not be the regular on the channel i wanted to talk about a lot of the just takes that i saw today ranging from it not affecting the price to other people saying their thoughts that i just absolutely don't agree with because i am very passionate on the subject and i do hope you enjoy the conversation even if you disagree with me while i really laid it out there feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and don't be scared to say your thoughts on this sort of thing but i i very much felt the type of way and needed to get that off my chest so thanks for hearing me ramble